Hi everyone and welcome back Team Lizzie's Angels. In this episode of Chef Lizzie's and Team Lecture Series, we have collaborated with my good friend and an excellent teacher in Vietnam, Miss Maripert Singh and her channel, Learn with Marie. On her channel, Marie talks about learning the English language and everything else that are relevant to the language. Check out her channel, links on the description below. In this collaboration video, Marie has presented food and service safe facilities and has shown us the utmost importance of safety in the hospitality sector. Learn with Marie's channel will be a part of Chef Lizzie's and Team Lecture Series. For Learn with Marie's full video, click on the i-card up on the top right corner to show the link on that video. So now sit back, relax, and learn with Marie. Hello everyone and welcome to Learn with Marie. Today's lesson is about food and service safe facilities. As we all know, employers must provide welfare facilities in a working environment that's healthy and safe for everyone in the workplace. Your working environment is affected by factors including health and safety security and working hours. A poor environment put your safety at risk, especially food service. Here are the objectives that we need to remember. Pick materials equipment that are safe for use in food service operations. Install and maintain equipments. Avoid food safety hazards caused by utilities. Maintain your facility. Handle emergencies. And lastly, prevent and control pests. When conducting a business, look at the key principles of health and safety design. Health and safety by design is not a separate thing. From good design. They are the same thing. What are the safety requirements for safe operation? When talking about floor walls and ceilings, materials must be smooth and durable for easier cleaning and must be regularly maintained. Food service equipments must meet these standards if it will come in contact with food. We must have the following. Non-absorbent, easy to clean, durable, and resistant to damage. To install and maintain equipments, a floor-mounted equipment must be either of the following. Mounted on legs at least 6 inches which is 15 centimeters in high, and sealed to a masonry base. While the tabletop equipment should be either mounted on legs 10 centimeters high and sealed to countertop. Once equipment has been installed, we need to maintain it regularly, simply Set up a schedule with your supplier or manufacturer. Check up equipment regularly to make sure it is working correctly. Now let's go to this washing machines. How I wish I had this. These washing machines must be installed and it is one of the most important equipment in food service. In a way that keeps utensils equipment and other food contact services from becoming contaminated. It should be conveniently located and reachable and of course follow manufacturer's instruction. When selecting these washers, make sure of the following. Detergents and sanitizers are approved by the local regulatory authority. They have the ability to measure water temperature, water pressure, 
cleaning and sanitizing chemical concentration. Information about the correct settings are posted on the machine. There is also what we call three compartment sink. Purchase a sink large enough to accommodate large utensils and large equipments. Now let's talk about the location of the hand washing stations. They are required in restroom or directly next to them. In food preparation areas, in service areas, and in these washing areas. Remember, hand washing sink should only be used for hand washing. Hand washing stations must have the following hot and cold running water, soap, a way to dry hands, garbage container, and signage. Our next topic is about water and plumbing. Sanitary refers to carrying waste water to the waste disposal system. So, plumbing plays an important role. With our sources of drinking water should be approved public water mains, regularly tested and maintained private sources, close portable water containers, and water transport vehicle. Cross connection. Hmm, what is cross connection? It is physically link between safe water and dirty water from drains. Now let's go to other sources of waste water. The first one is backflow. Backflow is a reverse flow of contaminants through a cross connection into drinkable water supply. The other one is back siphonage. Back siphonage is a vacuum created in the plumbing system that sucks contaminants into the water supply. This occurs when high water use in one area of the operation creates a vacuum. A running hose in a mop bucket can lead to back siphonage. There are three methods of the backflow preventions. Vacuum breaker, air gap, and lighting. Now let's talk about the installation and maintaining lighting. Different areas of facility have different lighting intensity requirement. Local jurisdiction usually require preparation area to be brighter than other areas. All lights should have shutter resistant light bulbs or protective covers. Replace burn out bulbs with correct size bulbs. Another important factor about food service is the ventilation. The right ventilation system for a particular place depends upon climate and the needs of the structure for food service ventilation system. It must have cleaned, maintained to prevent grease and condensation from building up on walls and ceilings. Follow manufacturer's recommendations and of course, meet regular regulatory requirements. How to get rid of the filthy garbage? Garbage should be removed from preparation area ASAP. Be careful not to contaminate food and avoid food contact. Garbage surface should be cleaned inside and outside frequently. Clean them away from food preparation and storage areas. What are the points indoor garbage containers should have? Must be leak-proof, waterproof, and pest-proof, and it should be easy to clean. Remember to cover when not in use. Storage must not create a public health hazard. How about outdoor garbage containers? 
should be placed on a smooth, durable, non-absorbent surface and have a tight fitting lids. Covered it at all times and have their drain plugs in place. Now, let's talk all about imminent health hazards, which a significant threat or danger to health requires immediate correction or closure to prevent injury. What are the possible imminent health hazards? They are electric power outrages, fire, flood, and sewage backups. How to respond to crisis affecting the facility? Determine if there is a significant risk to the safety or security of your food. And, of course, if the risk is significant. Is your facility safe? If not, stop the service for them in time. But notify the local regulatory authority. Decide how to correct the problem. Establish time temperature control. Clean and sanitize surfaces. Verify if water is drinkable. And re-establish physical security of the facility. Here's a special message to all the aspiring chefs today. A recipe has no soul. You, as the cook, must bring soul to the recipe.